It's been Jack Benny, Amos and Andy, Bergen and McCarthy. Still waiting to entertain you on CBS are Rocky Jordan, Horace Height, Dick Ames, and Joe Stafford, our Miss Brooks, The Whistler, and Red Skelton. Now, Del Monte Foods brings you a world of adventure with... Rocky Jordan. Hey, Rocky, that girl's got a gun. Yeah, I see her, Chris. Let's get up there. Look out, mister! Look out! That's all for tonight, lady. No, Give no. me that gun. Give it to me. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. I'll kill him. Any more, you won't. She didn't hit the guy, Rocky. He ran out the door. But don't bother with him, Chris. She'll tell us all about him. Won't you, lady? No, let go of me. We'll try for more back in my office. Come on, let's go. I won't tell you anything. Never. All right, come on. Break it up, everybody. Let us through. No. All right. no. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Yes, Del Monte, the best-liked brand of canned fruits and vegetables in the whole wide world, takes you now to the Cafe Tambourine in Cairo, gateway to the ancient East, where modern adventure and intrigue unfold against a backdrop of antiquity. Tonight's Rocky Jordan story, The Perfect Witness. Cairo holds all sorts of lonely people, like the guy who'd sat at my bar the night of the 15th with his coat collar turned up and a faded blue scarf that helped hide his face. I hadn't bothered about him till a girl with a good figure and a bad aim came in, throwing shots at him. The bullets had found nothing but the back mirror, and he was gone before I even saw his face. It happened that quick. I grabbed the gun away from her, got her into my office, and right away called Captain Sam Sabaya to come on over. After a while, she began to settle down, but she still had everything but answers. It'll do you no good to keep asking, Mr. Jordan. But we can keep looking, can't we? Yeah, your purse ought to have some identification. Should it? Let's see. Passport made out to Cora Good. This belong to you? I'd hardly be carrying somebody else's passport. All right, Cora, let's take it for... Here, yeah, Chris. I just found this tie clip in front of the bar where the guy was sitting. The one that flew the coop. Oh, thanks. The initial's B.G., is this his, Cora? You're doing all the guessing, aren't you? What was his name? Come on, tell me, Cora. You'll find out soon enough. He's turned up dead in a gutter. Nice kid, ain't she, Rock? Now, ah, skip it, Chris. Anyway, why, why should you care? Why should anyone care? Because it happens I don't like shootings in my place. What's more, I don't like people coming in here working out their problems at my expense. All you've got to worry about is a broken mirror. Captain Sabai is here, Rocky. Oh, come on in, Sam. Well, Jordan, I see your tambourine is having its usual busy evening. Her passport says Cora Good. Here's her purse and her gun. Now get her out of here. In a moment. I have not yet seen the victim. She missed him a country mile. I bet he hasn't stopped running yet. Who was he, Miss Good? You needn't expect me to tell you anything. Jordan? Well, we didn't get a look at him, Sam. He was sitting at the bar in your cafe, as you told me on the phone, yet you saw not what he looked... He had his coat collar turned up around his face, along with a big scarf. Hmm. The inevitable Mr. X. I hate him. I'll admit that. I hate him. You will tell us much more than that. Never. You'll get nothing from me. At once, Miss Good, who is this man and why did you try to kill him in this manner? Oh, throw the light in her face someplace else, Sam. This isn't the torture tank. As you wish, Jordan. Let us trust that the ride to headquarters will loosen her tongue. She walked out ahead of Sam and I hope that was the last of her. Knowing things just don't happen that way for me. But after a couple of days waiting without anything more from Sam, I began to wonder. And that's when somebody else came into my life. A clean-shaven, graying man with a neat mustache and dark continental dress who invited me to join him at a table in a tambourine. He introduced himself as Dr. Hugo Klost. A psychiatrist, Mr. Jordan. Oh, I see. Your office somewhere around here, Dr. Klost? Oh, no, no. Nice. I am in Cairo for only a few days. Well, don't miss the pyramids. Thank you. However, I think we have a greater interest in common... It generally happens that way. A former patient of mine, Cora Good. Oh, yeah. Former patient, you say? I, I had her under therapy some months ago in Paris, but she left before any real progress could be made. And that's what brought you to Cairo? Oh, no, no. I am here on quite another matter. I just happened to read in the papers about the shooting incident here in your cafe the other night. Uh, a most unfortunate girl. Yeah. Did she have a habit of throwing shots at people? Oh, no, nothing that serious until now. 
A strange emotional disturbance which found outlet in various ways. I, I only wish I could help her. Well, she knew who she was shooting at, even if she won't tell anybody. Oh, I have no doubt of that. Maybe you'd have some idea who he was, Dr. Kloss. Uh, uh, that is the exact reason why I came to you, Mr. Chorton, to see if you could tell me who the man was. I don't know. Ah, too bad. Somehow there in the identity of that man lies the heart of her problem. Somebody like you might get it from her. I shall make every effort. Well, thank you for your time, Mr. Jordan. It figured Dr. Klaas wouldn't get any more from her. And I knew it for sure when some more days went by without any more word. But after what he told me, I did a lot of thinking about Cora. Call it some strange attraction or just a puzzle left unsolved, she kept staying in my mind. And I was interested when Sam called me to come to his office. As you have guessed, Jordan, this is about Cora Gould. What's she been telling you? Nothing more. However, the man whom she tried to kill has not appeared to prefer charges. Unless you wish to do so, Oh, then... no, not me, Sam. Then we cannot keep her in jail much longer. You're letting her go? She is to be released. Dr. Hugo Kloss advises this move. Hmm. Our police doctor strongly concurs. And how does this concern me? Which is only that you might be seeing her again. <laughs> what gave you that idea? You must find her attractive. In fact, she is quite a different person now. Oh, in other words, you want me to keep an eye on her, huh? Cora Gould is a girl with a very great problem, Jordan, which one such as you might find interesting in solving. Sure, Sam. I get it. But no promises. We understand each other, Jordan. No promises. Well, it looked like Sam had an idea. And I wanted just enough about Cora to give it a try. So I flagged a taxi out in front of headquarters and waited at the curb till she came out the door. Taxi lady? What? Oh. Oh, Mr. Jordan. I thought we might be going in the same direction. Well, I don't know. No beefs, Cora. Hop in. I'll drop you wherever you like. You're very kind. Thank you. Uh, just drive it around for a while, cabbie. Wonderful to be out of that place. Yeah, the rest seems to have done you some good. So you've noticed, too. Yes, I do feel much better. Now, just keep it that way. Mr. Jo... Rocky. Yeah? I... I've got to tell you how sorry I am for all the trouble. I'd like to be forgiven. Consider it done. I guess I got a little rough myself. You had every right. You know, uh, I had a talk with a friend of yours... Uh, Dr. Klost. He told me. Perhaps he helped you understand. A little. He's still wondering the same thing I am, about the guy you shot at. Please, let's not talk about it. I want to forget everything. All right, Cora. Oh, you haven't told me where to drop you off. <laughs> Would you believe it? I, I don't know myself. My luggage is still at the airport. You have to stay someplace. You know Cairo Rocky... Could you recommend a nice place to stay? Well, let's see. Uh, I think you'd like the Acacia Court. It's not too expensive. Good. Now I can get settled and see this town like I've always wanted to. With some help from a guy who knows, Carol? What? Yes. I'd like that very much. Very much. <laughs> I stayed with her till she was settled, and we made a date for the next morning to do the town. I'd almost forgotten I was doing all this for Sam until I got back to the tambourine that night. A telephone in my office brought me right back to Earth. Hello, tambourine. I've got a friendly tip, Jordan. Who is this? I was at your bar the other night. Overcoat, blue scarf. Oh, sure, I might have known. The guy Cora shot at. Who are you? Somebody that says to watch it. She's going to lead you right into trouble. Come on, who are you? Clear it up, will you? Hello! Hello! Uh. He was there and gone, and I had just enough to know Cora's problem wasn't over, and that I had to keep our date for the next morning. She was ready and waiting. We started out by doing the bazaars. The Kamzawi with its porcelain and glassware. The Souk El Sela, all slippers and other footwear. The Bazaar Turk blazing with jewelry, gold work, and precious stones. We had lunch at a little place in the Nile. 
In the afternoon, we went to the races at Gezira. We were back at the Shepherds for dinner. After that, it was Cairo by night. I kept thinking about the phone call the night before and wondered what it meant. But Cora seemed to have forgotten everything. She was all excitement with everything, everything new. It seemed we'd known each other for a long time with nothing wrong anywhere. It was one o'clock in the morning when we were back by the fountain at the Acacia Courts and I was telling her goodnight. It's been wonderful, Rocky. Everything. It doesn't have to stop with tonight, you know. No. No, it mustn't. Is that how you feel, too? Enough to want everything right with you. Rocky, please. You're trouble, Cora. Is it all gone? Are you sure? Every bit gone. You must believe me. I'll keep trying. Thank you, Rocky. You know, I'll never forget the view from the Citadel. Can't we go there again sometime? Sure, any time you say. It's good to have something to look forward to. Just don't ever look back. Tomorrow, then? Yes, tomorrow. Good night, Rocky. Good night, Cora. A moment, Jordan. Uh, Sam, what are you doing here? I've been waiting. This doesn't go with our deal. I got nothing to tell you yet. On the contrary, Jordan, as you shall see. Come with me now, and quickly. Sam walked me to his limousine, waiting half a block down. I waited for more as we drove to headquarters, but he wasn't ready to talk. Not even after we got there, until we'd gone down some familiar steps and into the morgue. Then he stopped and took something from a table. I show you a blue scarf, Jordan. Can you identify it? It's like the one the guy was wearing, the one Cora shot at at my cafe. And this coat? It could be his. I take it he's down here, too. This way, Jordan. Have you seen this man before? No. I told you I never got a look at his face. How'd this happen? He was found in his room at the Sholem Hotel. Shot, as you see. You'd have the name, too, then. His name, Jordan, was Benjamin Good. Good? That goes with Cora's last name. Who was he, your husband? He was. B.G., the initials on his tie clip. I should have figured they tied in. Well, Cora's got to be told. Need anyone tell her, Jordan? Oh, now, wait a minute, Sam. You will be interested to know that I had Sergeant Greco waiting for her in her apartment at the Acacia Courts. Don't tell me. Yes, Jordan. Cora Gould is again under arrest, and this time for murder. Del Monte Foods is presenting tonight's adventure with Rocky Jordan. Here in the West, we really do go for spiced tomato flavor, don't we? Put a Western favorite like fried shrimps on the table, and it's a sure thing somebody is going to ask for the catsup. You mean the Del Monte catsup, Larry. That's the catsup with the real, rich, lively taste we Westerners like. Yes, it's no wonder Del Monte is a top-ranking catsup and gaining new friends every day. Most folks recognize the taste of fine, genuinely vine-ripe tomatoes. And you get full enjoyment of that flavor in Del Monte catsup, thanks to its wonderful ingredient, pineapple vinegar. That's the sparkling superlative vinegar that coaxes out extra goodness in catsup. And only Del Monte has it. Del Monte is catsup as it really should be. Well, that's no surprise to your women listeners, Larry. Remember, depending on Del Monte for flavor and quality in any food is an old Western custom with us. Friends, why don't you join the millions of others who are already enjoying this grand catsup? Its price is just as tempting as its flavor. So ask your grocer for Del Monte catsup next time, sure. Now we take you back to Cairo and tonight's Rocky Jordan story, The Perfect Witness. Well, this looked like where I'd come in. Only now it was a lot worse. Just as I'd begun to believe that the problem that had made Cora fire the shots in my cafe was gone from her mind. But somehow she'd changed. Now she was under arrest for the murder of her husband. Sam left the office to handle some details, so I waited. Then he came back in, and Dr. Hugo Klost was with him. 
Well, I gather you got it all wrapped up, Sam. Should there be any question in your mind, Jordan? I'll tell you that when I see the witness. A witness is hardly necessary. Did you not witness her first attempt on Benjamin Good's life before we even knew who he was? It takes a lot more than that. Jordan, I am most interested in your change of heart toward this lady. I can only surmise what has transpired. Look, you're the one who deals with facts. What are they? Corey Good refuses to deny that she killed her husband. Again, she will say nothing. Well, let's get on to item number three. A little question of motive. A motive which I now have. Well, come on, let's have it. Captain Sabaya, are we to understand that you know why Cora killed her husband? In this letter which was found on Benjamin Good's person. It is addressed to his attorney and instructs him to start divorce proceedings against his wife. Well, that's still not enough, Sam. Jordan, the letter also leaves little doubt that Mr. Good had strong documented evidence concerning his wife's personal life, showing her in the worst possible light. Such a case would have cut her off from everything he owned if he had lived. Hmm? All right, I'm getting it, Sam. If he hadn't lived... If Benjamin Good were dead before the divorce, all the legacy would go to his wife. The letter indicates that it would be a rather large amount. One rarely finds a motive as strong as this. A little too strong, maybe. Uh, I only wish Cora had told me about her husband before. Ah, but now it is too late. Yes, as you say, Dr. Kloss. Uh, is that all, then? I must leave in a few hours. I am to attend a psychiatric meeting in Antwerp. I wish you a pleasant journey. Goodbye. Goodbye, Captain. Goodbye, Mr. Jordan. Perhaps we will meet again under happier circumstances. Yeah, sure, Doctor. Um, Sam. Hmm? Mind if I talk to Cora? Alone? Certainly not, Jordan. I will take you to her. I followed Sam down a hallway to the dimly lit cell block. He unlocked one of the doors, and I saw Cora slump back in a corner of the cell. It was hard to believe she was the same girl I'd been on the Citadel with an hour before. Sam closed the door and went away. You didn't have to come, Rocky. It's only to help you, Cora, if you let me. Please, Rocky, it's no use. Did you kill him? You can tell me, Cora. Did you kill your husband? Why don't you ask Captain Sabaya? He'll tell you what he thinks. Yeah, and he's got a reason to go with it. Something about a divorce that might cut you off from everything your husband had. Is that the right one? It's a good one, isn't it? If I could get away with it. All right, Cora. But you've got to think about the trial. I can get you a good lawyer. I've already engaged one. Isn't there anything you want me to do? I want me to go. And leave me alone. I gave it up and left her. It was daylight by the time I got back to the tambourine. Two hours later, the papers are on the streets playing up the case with big headlines. And every new addition added more to the story with all the evidence. And they made it look strong. I kept in touch with Sam, but Cora stayed as mum as ever. Another full day went by before there was any more, and that's when a briefcase with feet came into my office. Harisho T. Merkel, Mr. Jordan, attorney. Attorney for who? Attorney for Mrs. Cora Good. I represent her in a forthcoming murder trial. Oh, I see. Well, sit down, Mr. Merkel. Thank you. <sighs> now, Mr. Jordan, where were you on Tuesday, day before yesterday? Oh, hold it, Merkel. We're not in a courtroom. You refuse to state? All right, I was with Cora all day, seeing Cairo. Very well. And exactly where were you between the hours of 11 and 12 that night? We were at the Citadel. You're quite sure? Positive. Then you will swear to that in court. Of course I will. What's this all about? Cora Good's defense, Mr. Jordan. Her husband was shot that night at approximately 11.30 in his room at the Sholem Hotel, five miles on the other side of town. Would you mind saying that again? That is all, Mr. Jordan. Thank you. Ah. And good day. I just sat there trying to make that one out. Why hadn't Cora said she couldn't have done it when she was first apprehended? A lot more questions came piling in, and I picked up the phone for a call to the Sholem Hotel where Benjamin Good had been found dead. What I learned there decided my next move. It took more than a phone call this time, and half an hour later, I was at a desk at the Cairo airport. The right kind of convincing got a man to check the manifest for incoming passengers for the past few days. And I waited. DWA Constellation, now loading at gate two for Algiers, Casablanca, Rome, Geneva, Paris... It is barely possible that I can help you now, sir. Well, how do we make sure? It is only that there is difficulty reading the manifests. My spectacles are broken. Here, take this pound note and buy you some new ones. Ah, 
Thank you, sir. Uh, Benjamin Good arrived from Paris by TWA at 5 p.m. on the 16th. The 16th? It couldn't be a mistake. It wasn't the 15th. Sir, do you think I cannot read? It was the 16th. I uh, just wanted to be sure. It was way too clear now. The shooting in my cafe took place on the night of the 15th. Cora's husband hadn't arrived in Cairo till the next day. So the lonely figure at my bar that night wasn't Benjamin Good. It was somebody else posing as him. Scarf, turned up coat and all, to plant the tie clip with his initials. It had taken me that long, from the night Cora had fired those shots till now, to find out what went on. Right away, I made a long-distance phone call. I wasn't satisfied with what I got there, so I made another call. Then I had it all. I went back and had a long talk with Sam Subaya. Then he let me in to see Cora again. Rocky, I told you I didn't want you to come here. All right, drop the act, Cora. We're all through doing things your way. Just leave me alone, please. So you can keep on using me as a sucker? Me, your perfect witness? What? What are you saying? Oh, come on, take some credit, Cora. The setup was great. Everything was to look like you killed your husband. But I was to be the one to prove you didn't. You were with me right at the time it happened. I never asked you to do anything. Sure you didn't. Why the delay? To give the real killer a chance to get away? Out of Cairo? Who was he, Cora? Rocky, I swear I don't know what you're talking about. But I do now. You knew there'd be a little checking up. The record shows there's a psychiatric meeting in Antwerp at the time Hugo Kloss said he was going there. Well... But you forgot another record. The one that says Kloss isn't a doctor and he isn't a psychiatrist. So he couldn't attend that meeting. He lied and he's been lying all along. Has he, Rocky? It's a safe bet Kloss never went to Antwerp at all. But he's hiding someplace else, waiting for you to be released. So he can meet you. And you wander off together with Benjamin Good's money. A swell story, but everything hearsay. You have nothing definite against Hugo. And nothing at all to prove that I worked with him. Yeah, that's right. What's more, you're my proof that I did not kill Benjamin. So you see, in spite of what you think, they'll have to let me go. All right, Cora. Let's look at it this way. Any way you like, Rocky. I can prove you didn't kill Benjamin. But I can also prove that you did. In just a moment, Rocky Jordan returns to conclude tonight's story. The way I hear it, meatless meals must be just about the hardest meals in the world to plan. But they can be easier and better to eat, too, with Del Monte tomato sauce to give you a lift. Why, of course, Larry. It has so much rich spiced tomato flavor, it makes meatless dishes taste heartier and, well, more interesting. But you'd better make sure it's Del Monte tomato sauce. Ask any good cook you know, friends, and see if she doesn't say the same. Del Monte is the original tomato sauce. That's why there just isn't any other brand of tomato sauce but Del Monte to so many of you. Because you've found it so good over so many years. And because no other brand has ever matched its special combination of fine tomato goodness and tempting spices. It's not too bland and not too spicy. Just perfectly balanced for cooking. That's what I like. Its flavor is so nice and clear. It adds lots of pep to the delicate flavor of cheese and eggs, for instance, but doesn't drown them out either. Why not get this help with your Lenten dishes? Just remember, for flavor, for texture, for consistency, it pays to insist on Del Monte tomato sauce. Back now to Rocky Jordan for the conclusion of tonight's story. So I'd been made the sucker, the perfect witness. First to prove that Cora Good wanted to kill her husband, now to prove that she didn't do it. When I told her what I knew about Hugo Klost and her whole deal to get her husband out of the way for his money, she looked like she was going to laugh at me. They'd still have to turn her loose on my testimony. Only then I gave her something more to think about, and the smile started to fade. You're not making any sense, Rocky. Well, a jury will decide that, Cora. You have no way to prove I killed anybody, and you know it. All right, try this one. Supposing I refused to testify that you were with me last night. I was with you, though, every minute. But I'm your only witness, Cora. I can say where you were, and you go free. But what if I suddenly forget? Well, you couldn't. Lapse of memory, let's call it. I was alone. 
I went snipe hunting out in the desert. You'd be lying. Think about it, Cora. Go into that courtroom with nobody to back up your story and you'll get the book thrown at you. So that's it. You came in here to threaten a confession out of me. Well, you'd better not try it. Because we were at the Citadel, you and I, from 11 till after 12 o'clock. I don't remember a thing about it. Not a thing. Rocky, what do you want? For you to tell the truth. The way Hugo Klaast is hiding. You think I'd be so stupid? Tell it now, Cor, and you may not be executed. Admit Hugo Klaas did the actual killing. You'll be convicted as an accomplice, but you'll get off easier. Rocky, listen. Hugo really doesn't mean anything to me. Oh, to somebody convenient, huh? Like I was. Hugo did it then, huh? Of course. Rocky, remember the way it was last night? It could always be like that. There's lots of money. Where is he, Cora? He took the plane to Tunis. How do we find him? At the Hotel Sahara. Waiting for me. Thank you. It's all I wanted to know. Come in, Jordan. Come in. I trust you had a pleasant night's sleep. Yeah, finally, Sam. Any word back from Tunis? Indeed, there is. Hugo Claus was apprehended at the Sahara Hotel. He's being held for extradition. Thanks to your ingenious plan. Am I threatening not to testify for it? Our plan, Sam. No. I must confess that when you came with the suggestion, I did not dream that it would work so well. Yeah, Cora wouldn't like knowing that. I fear that she has much more to worry about. So now we have a double trial on our hands. Why not try for three, Sam? Do you refer, of course, to the man wearing the blue scarf in your cafe that night? A plan to make us think she was shooting at Benjamin Good. He figures to be the same one who made the phone call later. There are many in Cairo who would assist in such doings for a price. Oh, by the way, have you figured out why they used Cairo? They must have known that Benjamin Good would arrive here on the 16th. They worked out their plan from there. And it had to include me. Give me the reason for that. <laughs> the man with the blue scarf who aided them. He must have known of your reaction to a pretty face. <laughs> All right, Sam. Anyhow, I'm going to hand it to you. Why so, Jordan? You were right about Cora's motive all along. Mm, fortunately so. In spite of their elaborate scheme to cover for the crime, their own efforts tripped them up. Well, I guess that'll be a lesson. A lesson that few will ever learn, Jordan. <laughs> the finest in tomato flavor. Enjoy the whole family of Del Monte tomato products. Del Monte catsup and chili sauce. Del Monte tomato sauce and tomato juice. And Del Monte whole peeled tomatoes. Remember, buy wisely. Buy for flavor. Buy Del Monte. Del Monte, the brand you trust for flavor in so many good foods. Rocky Jordan, written by Gomer Cool and Larry Roman, stars Jack Moyles in the title role with Jay Novello as Sam Sabaya, and is produced and directed by Cliff Howell, with original music composed and conducted by Richard Arunt. Remember, you have a date next week at the Cafe Tambourine, run by Rocky Jordan. Same time, same station. And the story is foolproof. For a truly delicious peach shortcake, buy Del Monte peaches, sliced or halves. Yes, whenever you want ripe, mellow, truly magnificent peaches, look for the world's favorite brand of peaches, Del Monte. Larry Thor speaking. Rocky Jordan is presented over CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> <laughs> 